Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 7, Ionic Equilibrium. And in today's video, we're going to focus on the subtopic of 7.1 asset investors, part 3 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to relate the string of the weak acid as well as the weak base to the respective dissociation constant. So for the weak acid, we're going to look into the Ka representing acid. Meanwhile, for the weak base, we're going to look into Kb, B representing the base. Next, we're also going to learn on how to perform calculation involving the pH, dissociation constant, initial concentration, equilibrium concentration, as well as the degree of dissociation. So for the learning outcome of F and G, this will be covered in this video, which is in part 3. For the learning outcome of H and I, we're going to look about that in the next video, which is in part 4. So without any further ado, let us start with part 3 of the video first. So the strength of acid and bases. So the strength of acid and bases can be compared in terms of the dissociation constant, whether it Ka or Kb, and it can also be compared based on the PKA values or the PKB values. And lastly, we can also compare that by using the degree of the dissociation. The higher the degree of the dissociation means that it's going to be a stronger acid or a stronger base. Now, let us look into the acidity among the weak acid first. So the value of Ka will be the uh, major parameter in order for us to distinguish the relative acidity strength of the weak acid. Let's say if we have a weak acid, which is the ethan weak acid here, when it dissolves in water, it's going to dissociate into forming an ethan weight ion and the hydronium ion will going to be formed, where the water will take up the proton from the acid, okay? And from here, you can write the Ka value in which the Ka refer to the dissociation constant of the weak acid. So, TH3COO minus multiplied by the concentration of the another product, which is the hydronium ion, divided by the concentration of the acid. The water is not included in the uh, expression because water exists as a pure liquid here, okay? And from here, uh, we, we know that when the Ka value is higher, then the H3O plus here will be higher, in which this H3O plus here will determine the acidity. So we can say that when the concentration of the H3O plus increases, the Ka increases, thus making the pH to be lower, in which they are more acidic. Meanwhile, the pKa is the reverse of the Ka. So it needs to be in the backward direction or downward direction. So because you know that the pKa is basically the negative logarithm of the Ka value. So you can compare if you have negative log of 100 with a negative log of 10. So the higher the value of Ka, it will result in the lower pKa value. And this is based on the mathematical um, expression. Meanwhile, for the strong acid, basically, we're going to have a, a single head arrow here, which means that for the strong acid, it usually does not have any Ka value because it, it has a 100% ionization. The Ka can only be seen for the weak acid. All right? And... As mentioned, it have a 100% dissociation and it doesn't have any reversible error. Now we're going to look into the example on how we can apply the concept of Ka in determining the acidity among the weak acid. So as shown here, the table shows the acid dissociation constant Ka for the weak acid. We need to arrange the species in the order of the increasing acidity. So let's say if we look into the Type of acid here, it has a different types of Ka value. So let's say if I'm gonna take the H2CO3 for it for an example, if I were to dissolve that inside the water, which is H2O liquid, what I'm gonna get is HCO3 minus and a hydronium ion because it is a weak acid. So it's going to dissociate in water and they are in the states of equilibrium. So if I were to write the key values, 
then I will get the concentration of the HCO3 minus multiplied by the concentration of the hydronium ion, which is on the product side, divided by the concentration of the H2CO3. Okay, and as mentioned, among these three values, this one will have the higher value because it, it is to the power of negative 7. So this one is the highest Ka value. So when it has a higher Ka value, it means that it has a higher concentration of the H3O+. Therefore, it is the most acidic. Okay. And this is followed by the negative 8, which is this one is number 2. And this one is number 3. Right? So we can say that the most acidic is the H2CO3. Followed by the HOCl. And then lastly will be the H2O2, which is the hydrogen peroxide. And now we're going to do another example, which is example number 2 here. So for example number 2, the table shows the pKa for the weak acid. We need to determine the higher relative acidity between these two acids here. So as what you can see, uh, we have the 2 pKa value. So for the ethanoic acid, we have 4.74. For the methanoic acid, we got 3.76. So basically here, you can make another column that representing the Ka. Okay, as I as I mentioned before, pKa is basically a negative log. Okay, okay. let's say if you have 4.74, it means that Ka is going to be 10 to the power of negative 4.74. And then you're going to calculate the value here. And then you can also do that for the 3.76, in which negative log Ka is equal to 3.76. So we're going to bring the negative on the left hand side, negative 3.76. And then you're going to anti log, which is Ka is equal to 10 to the power of 3.76. Okay, so you can put that inside your calculator where 10 to the power of negative 474 is going to be equal to 1.82 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And for the HCOOH, we can calculate that. And we're going to get 1.74 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So from here, you can conclude that when the PKE lower, PKE is a little bit kecil, the Ka value is going to be higher. Okay, in which means that this is a stronger acid. Okay, so we can say that the relative acidity of the methanoic acid is stronger than the ethanoic acid. Now, similar thing, but now we're going to look into the basicity among the weak bases. So the value of Kb can be used to distinguish the relative basicity. So B representing the base. And we're going to look the, into the equation, which is the ammonia. When it dissolves in water, it's going to form the ammonium 4 plus aqueous ion as well as the hydroxide ion. So for the base, we're going to be interested with the hydroxide ion here. So let's say if we were to write the Kb value, we're going to have the ammonium ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide divided by the concentration of the ammonia. And as usual, when the hydroxide ion increases, the Kb value will be increases, and this Kb and the pKb will be inversely proportional. So you're going to have a negative, uh, a downward arrow here. Okay, and the higher the pH, which is nearing to 14, which it means that it is a more basic species. And similarly, like before, for the strong base, uh, it's going to having no Kb value because it has a 100% dissociation and it does not have any reversible error. So now we're going to look into the example. So the table shows the base dissociation constant Kb for the weak basis. We need to arrange the species in the order of the increasing basicity. So similar to the acid, when the Kb value is higher, it means that it's going to have a higher concentration of the hydroxide ion since we are talking about the basicity. 
So as what you can see here, the 10 to the power of negative 4 is going to be the having a highest Kp value, followed by the ammonia, and then the N2H4. So we can say that the ethyl amine here will have the highest specificity, followed by the ammonia, and then followed by the N2H4. So here are the most basic. And now for the example number two, the table shows the PKB of the weak bases. We need to identify which of them has a higher relative basicity. So as I mentioned here, the KB and the PKB is inversely proportional. So when the PKB value is lower, it means that the KB value is higher. So you can prove that by using calculation. So when it is lower, the KB is higher, which means that the hydroxide concentration is going to be higher as well. So this is going to be higher uh, basicity in comparison to the phenyl amine here. So we can say that the relative basicity of the ammonia will be higher than the phenyl amine, which is the C6H5NH2. Now, we're going to learn on how to solve problem involving weak acid as well as the weak base. So there are two general types of the problem. First, if we are given equilibrium concentration, we need to find the Ka or Kb. Or in other situations, we can also be given the Ka or Kb value and some other concentration information. But then we need to find the concentration at equilibrium. So these are the two general problems that we are need to be dealing with. So in order to solve the problem, as usual, we need to use the ice table. So here are the ice table for the weak acid. So maybe at the beginning, you are given a certain concentration. So when there is a change, because the stoichiometry one is here, the reactant which will be deducted with minus x. The product will be increased by 1x. The same goes to the other, the other of the products here. And at the equilibrium, since we are talking about the reversible arrow, we're going to get the c minus x, x and x. And from here, you can determine the Ka or the Kb values, depending on the question. And here are the some tips. So in this uh, chapter, it, let's, say, let's say if your Ka or Kb value that is being given as a value of a times 10 to the power of negative 5 and smaller, so let's say 10 to the power of negative 6 or certain value to the power of negative 7, you can assume that your c minus x is equal to c, okay? Or when you have a Ka or Kb value that is higher than 10 to the power of negative 4 or larger, let's say 10 to the power of negative 3 or 10 to the power of negative 2, then you can do the calculation as usual, which is using the quadratic equation, okay? So here is to make your life easier. So let's say if you have negative 6 or negative 7, you can simply assume, so you can uh, cut the step to be even faster. Or you can also use the quadratic equation if you want. Okay, but the assumption method will be much faster in my opinion. Okay, to understand more about how we can apply this ice table and tips, let us look into the example. So for example number one, we need to calculate the pH of the 0 0.036 molar nitrous acid which is the HNO2 solution. So the Ka value here is given to be 4.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So for the nitrous acid, it is an example of the weak acid. So first thing first, uh, what we can do is we're going to place the HNO2 dissociation inside the water. So we can write the equation in which the HNO2 aqueous dissolve in water and it is in equilibrium with its, with its hydronium aqueous ion as well as the NO2 to minus aqueous ion. Okay, so one of the hydrogen is being transferred into H3, H2O to form H3O plus. And from here, uh, you need to find out because the question asks us to find the pH. So pH is related with the concentration of the H3O plus. So we need to find the concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium. So we're going to use the ice table. So we have the concentration initial, concentration change, and as well as the concentration at equilibrium, which is in the unit of molarity. So initially, 
the concentration of the nitrous acid is given to be 0 0.036. Meanwhile, for the concentration of the ions at the beginning of the reaction is 0. For the liquid water, because it is in the liquid state, we can ignore that in our ice table. Okay, but as time goes by, uh, the concentration of the reactant will be reduced by minus x. Meanwhile, for the ions which acting as a product will be increasing by plus x and plus x respectively. And at equilibrium, we're gonna get 0 0.036 minus x, x and x. Okay, and from here you can make up your Ka expression in which Ka is equal to the history of dust multiplied by the concentration of another product which is NO2 minus divided by the HNO2. So from here, um, you can substitute the value of x into here and x representing the NO2 minus divided by the HNO2 which is 0 0.036 minus x. And then your Ka value you have no need to be 4.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So 10 to the power of negative 4 is quite large for a Ka value. So you cannot make an assumption. You need to use the quadratic equation as usual. So what we're going to do is that we're going to bring this term to the right hand side. And then once you multiply that and expand, you need to bring it back to the left hand side in order to make a quadratic equation of ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So once you plug this value inside the calculator, you're going to get uh, two x values, which is x equal to the negative 4.26 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar, or you can get x to be 3.8 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So in this case, we're going to take these values because it is more logical. Okay, because concentration cannot be negative. And that is why we're going to take this value here because it is more relevant. So we can say that the history of plus is equal to the concentration of x. And we can substitute this value, which is this value is in the, in the unit of molarity inside this uh, pH value because we need to find the pH. So pH is equal to the negative log H3 O plus. So we're going to substitute this value inside here. And then once you do the maths, we're going to get the pH to be 2.42. All right. Now we're going to look into the next example. In this, in where we're going to calculate the pH of a 0 0.20 molar solution of the HCN and then the Ka value here is given to be 4.9 times 10 to the power of negative 10 which is quite small. So HCN here is an example of the weak acid. So first thing first, make an equation HCN dissolving inside the water and it's going to be a reversible error. So when the weak acid dissolves in water, the H is going to be transferred into H2O to form H3O plus aqueous ion, and it's going to be Cn minus here. And since we need to find the pH, we need to find the concentration of the H3O plus. Okay, so for this reason, we need to use the ice table. So ICE, and then at the initial stage, we have the concentration of HCN to be 0 0.2. For the ions, it's going to be 0 and 0. For the liquid water, it can be ignored for the ice level. So for the changes, uh, it's going to be the reactant will be deducted by minus x. The product will be increasing by plus x and plus x according to its stoichiometry here. So at equilibrium, we're going to get 0 0.2 minus x. We got x and x for the respective ions. So as usual, we can uh, write the Ka expression. So the Ka is equal to H3O plus multiplied by the Cn minus divided by HCn, which is the reactant. And then we're going to substitute the H3O plus value at equilibrium, which is x, Cn minus, which is x, and then HCn to be 0 0.2 minus x. Okay, And then uh, the Ka is equal to 4.9 times 10 to the power of negative 10. And then uh, since we know that our Ka is times 10 to the power of negative 10, which is very, very small, we can assume that 0 0.2 minus x is going to be equal to 0 0.2. So here you can make an assumption.
Okay, so when you make an when you make an assumption, you can make the calculation much more easier. Okay, so you just multiply it on the right hand side, and then you need to just square root the answer. So you're gonna get the x value to be nine point nine times ten to the power of negative six more la. Okay, where x here refer to the concentration of the H three or plus or the H plus. Okay. And, and this is where we're going to see how the assumption can save your time. If you wanted to do a quadratic, okay, if you wanted to do a quadratic equation, you can do that and you can also get to the similar answer, but sometimes it is longer. Okay, and this is how the assumption can help you. Alright, so uh, let's get back to the concentration of H+. Plus. So you can use that to calculate the concentration of the pH in which pH is equal to the negative log H plus. So we're going to substitute the value of H plus into this equation. And then we're going to get the pH value to be 5.0. Alright. So now for the example number 3, the base dissociation constant for the ammonia, which is NH3 aqueous, is, is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar. So we need to calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ion the pH as well as the percentage dissociation at equilibrium. So we are given the initial concentration of ammonia is 0 0.15 molar. So the ammonia here is a weak base. Okay, so from this, um, we can write the equation first when it dissolves in water, in which the ammonia when dissolved in water is going to form uh, ammonium plus aqueous ion as well as the hydroxide ion. And since we need to find the concentration of hydroxide ion, we need to do the ice table. Okay, and initially the concentration of the ammonia given is 0 0.15. The water can be ignored in the ice table because it is in the pure liquid. And then for the ions at the initial stage, it's going to be 0 and 0 respectively. And for the change, it's going to be deducted by minus x for the ammonia because it is on the reactant side. For the product side of the ions, we're going to be increasing by plus x and plus x. And at equilibrium, we're going to get 0 0.15 minus x, x and x. And from here, we can make our Kb expression in which we have the NH4 plus multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ion divided by the concentration of the ammonia, which acting as a reactant. So we have x and x here. And then for the ammonia, it's going to be 0 0.15. And we're going to make an assumption because our Kb value is given to be A times 10 to the power of negative 5, which is very, very small. So we can assume that 0 0.15 minus x value is going to be 0 0.15. So uh, we can make x multiply by x. This value here is basically equal to 0 0.15. So it will make your life easier. And then you just copy back the value. So you're going to multiply that with 0 0.15. And then you're going to solve the x value in which you get your x to be 1.64 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. And this x here refers to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And from here, you can calculate the value or the pOH first. Okay, because pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion. So we're going to put it inside here. And then once we do the maths, we're going to get the pOH to be 2.79. And uh, we can find our pH by relating the equation of pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So we are interested in the pH. So we can find the pH by uh, deducting 14 with 2.79. So we're going to get the pH for this reaction to be 11.21, which is very, very logical because ammonia is a weak base. 14 is a strong base, but for ammonia, it's going to be around 11. So it shows that it is a weak base and it is consistent with the species that we are having. And we also need to find the percentage dissociation at equilibrium. So we're going to use the formula of the percentage of dissociation, which the concentration dissociated means that it is the x value and the concentration initial refers to the ammonia at the initial stage, which is 0 0.15. So 
we're going to have 1.64 times 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by 0 0.15. And since we are talking about the percentage, then we're going to multiply it by 100%. So once we do the maths, we're going to get the percentage of dissociation to be 1.1%. So 1.1% is quite logical because weak base only dissociate partially in water. Alright? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!